Hey, how's it going guys? Derek Helms out here, Legs Defense. Um, just kind of been browsing YouTube, been looking at some how-to videos. I know I've looked it up in the past, how to build a proper wooden gate. Seen a lot of videos on there. Uh, I haven't quite seen one the way I build a gate. So I've been doing fencing for over 10 years. It's my third year. Uh, it's going in business as a company for myself. And there's a certain way I do it, you know? I put two-year warranty behind everything I do. Uh, so any improper issues for as far as the gate sagging, closing, covered by two years. Um, I haven't had no problems in the whole time I've been in business. Uh, the reason why. So if you want to step forward, forward a little closer, Junior. When building a gate, the main problem I run across and I see uh, when I go to a customer's house or when I see other contractors is when you're setting the post. Now here, you, as you see here, my hinges are gonna be cut right here. You get to see further along in the video. The main issue I see is that they only have one post here, okay? When building the gate, for me, it's mandatory to always have two metal posts here. Like I said, I have another post down there about eight foot down further, but you always wanna have two posts here supporting the weight where your hinges are actually be at. Um, it's common physics, basically two metal posts are gonna take half the load off this, rather than having all this weight right here from the gate where it's gonna be cut up right here, swinging on this one metal post, you got two posts here. Um, now this gate's pulling on these two metal posts, it's gonna take half the load, half the weight, common physics. Uh, like I said, this is gonna be my first video, uh, so it's gonna be a little bit long. Uh, it's gonna be one raw, unedited cut, unedited cut. Uh, so bear with me, but like I said, I think at the end of the video, it'll be real, real beneficial for you guys to stay through the whole video to see how I build my gates. Like I said, I haven't seen one on YouTube do the way I do it. Okay, so as I start out here, I got everything pre-cut already. I got my blocking pre-cut uh, just for the time sake of the video. Um, as you see here, I started out, I went ahead and put my, my picket down here. Uh, this is where I'm gonna start. Uh, this is where actually my first box can go behind this picket right here. And then I'll go ahead and build this way out. This is where my gate's gonna be cut right here. So if you want to swing around here, Junior, I'll show them right here. My first block, my first blocking will be right here. Is I went ahead and measured it, pre-measured it, and it's gonna be placed right back along here with this picket. I'm sure to make sure that I'm on this side of the bracket, so when I do cut, I don't have to worry about cutting through that bracket at all. Uh, same thing up here, okay? My second block, I go. I, I typically go to about three quarter inches to about an inch over from this block. Um, this can be your second block. These are gonna be where the gates can be cut open. These are gonna be where the latches are gonna be screwed in or your closing mechanism, okay? So like I said, for time's sake, I went ahead and put these in already. Uh, just go ahead and tack the bottom in, level it up, tack top in. As we put the pickets on, you'll go ahead and reinforce it with the pickets uh, with more nails as the pickets go over here. And then it'll strengthen up the gate. Um, one thing I do also with my, my gate one blue fences, I always run my top row first. I get my top row nice and straight. Then while I'm doing so, when I put my brackets on, I measure down the same distance from the center of my bracket down here as I measure the same distance from this center of my bracket down here. Uh, by doing so, you're basically assuring that if this top row is straight, then you measure the same distance down from here to there, same distance from here to there on your brackets. When you put these two by fours in the center of your brackets, this same distance is gonna be from here to here, this is gonna be the same distance from here to here, okay? The next step is gonna be to put your cross members on. I see a lot of times they put these cross members on, they'll put them like this, and they'll put them like this. Um, for me, if I'm thinking about, about it, you know, I always, put them, I always put them like this and like this. Uh, the reason why, uh, you just basically want to keep keep support where the hinges are at, you know? By doing this, it's going to be pushing up on this, this border here. Same thing as we push up this border here. For me, this doesn't really do much for it right here. Um, like that. So, like I said, I, I, everybody's got their own way to do it. This is the way I do it. Uh, I've had no problem like this. I put warranty on everything I do by doing it this way. And that's what the reason why. So, as I, like I said, I'll go ahead and I'll put these next cross members on. And I said, these are all pre-cut already. I measured them out. Um, my fences I like to build are typically about six pickets wide. My pickets come out five and a half inches uh, per picket, so six pickets roughly gonna be about 33 inches wide. So I went ahead and pre measured everything out already. Got my cross members on nice, tight, snug. I'll go ahead and put the first one in. Okay. And one or two nails fine, you don't have to overdo it right here. Uh, like I said, I, I like to put a couple here also on the face. And a couple here. As we put these things on, it's going to swarm up. We're going to yell it across here as well. But like I said, um, we'll come across that when we want to show you more. I'm going to put my second cross member in. And like I said, if you measure down the same distance, equal distance, equal distance, the same cut that you do right here will be exactly the same as the one there. And it should fit perfect. Okay. 
the next step would be to go ahead and put our pickets on. As you see here, I went ahead and put my first picket here. I got my block behind there, so it's nice and flush and neat with that. If you step a little closer here, I'll show them how I do my pickets here. So what we do is what we, do, what we want to do is we want to pull a string line all the way across. Now what I got here, if you see up close here, I went ahead and marked it. And by doing that, what, what I'm doing is I'm marking the distance from my picket to where my two by four is gonna be at. Okay, that way one you see on the back side of the fence, you have the same distance on top from here to here, all the way across your two by fours, okay? So if you see over here, I went ahead and I got that same mark. I on this place, pick it right over on top of it, and I marked right at the bottom of my two by four, right there. And I put another picket right here and on that mark at the bottom of my two by four. If your mark's correct, if, if your mark is correct right here, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this line out, which have nice, straight, even lines. Go ahead, pull your line out. Get some nail. You can see here my pick is split. This will be replaced. Uh, it's temporary, like I said, it's just for the build. When I build it out, my hinges are gonna come right here. I'll go, I'll build it out about two two pickets over, so I put my hinges on, and then when I come back to this picket, I'll go ahead and pop it out and replace it. Okay. Go ahead and keep the air pressure on. You know we're gonna need a little air. And step a little closer, I'll go ahead and close it. Nail patterns will be 222 for these wider pickets, so make sure you have two nails all the way across. I'll go ahead and hit my cross nail as well as I'm doing so. Keep on building out. Like I said, I like to build my fences uh, about six pickets wide. The customer wants a little wider, we go seven. The reason why is basically the wider you get, the more problems you'll have uh, with sagging. Okay? You see that little gap down at the bottom? Just go ahead and push it in, squeeze it in tight. Continue. Now, as you see, we get to the sixth picket where our hinges are going to go. I'm going to make a little space, okay? And also, just keep in mind when you're building the gate, this is the part that the customer's going to see the most. Uh, like I said, so make sure that you pick the nice, the, some nicer pickets, like I said. Uh, Patrol Spot Company on Irving's where I get all my materials from, top line materials, uh, just the best, like I said. And don't forget your cross members as well. Go down. We got another cross member here. Again, Patron, Patron Spy Company out of Irving, Texas. Got Camilo's owner there. Good stuff, good materials. Top line. So now here, if you come close closer, I see here, this is where my, actually my gate's gonna be cut and my hinge are gonna be put. So I wanna put a little, a little space here. And I, I typically put about eighth of an inch, I say. Uh, the reason why is when you have those hinges put on, you don't want no binding. You need to go down here. And you see here, bad picket. I'll go and take it out, no big deal. Place it. Again, my supplier, he takes all my returns. So if I do that bad picket, bad tier that I don't like, I toss the side, and I'll go exchange it out later. So I go to the top of my line, turn it out too high, too low, get my eighth of an inch gap, one picket, I'll come down here to the bottom, and just make sure your gap's about the same. And we put on two pickets usually, so we to put the hinges on, they're nice and all the way across. This one's gonna be ran flush to this one. Like that, okay? So now, we're gonna go and put the hinges on. You go and step on the side, Junior. Go ahead and decide. And like I said, it's gonna be real raw. Video guys, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not the best when it comes to internet and YouTube and all of that, so bear with me. 
So now our hinge is gonna be placed right here. This one's gonna be a two hinge setup. We're gonna put one hinge here and one hinge here. So what we do want first do we want to get cut the top one? We don't want to cut all three at one time. You just want to cut one at a time. Uh, if you're putting three hinges on, cut one hinge, cut two hinge, cut three hinge. In this case, we're gonna cut one, put the hinge on, and then we cut the middle and the bottom, put the bottom hinge on. Okay. So like I said, if you need to draw a line to help you out, kind of guide. We're not go ahead and do so. Uh, I'm doing this for a while, so kind of got down. So. Good. <laughs> Right here. Okay. So I like to cut a little extra piece. I like to cut one here, one step down. I like to also go about an eighth inch over and cut that as well. So you want to step on this other side with me? Uh, safety first, guys. Always wear your safety glasses. I know it's a bad example. Got your standard two hinge setup you get from most stores, Home Depot, uh, or your local supply company. The main thing is when you're putting these on to make sure you don't go into nail. So you want to see your nail pattern here. So you just want to make sure that you're putting these on. You don't want to hit any nails that you're running to. You want to get to the center of that two by four as much as you can. It's getting nice and good up there. That looks good. Always start from the inside and work your way out. Inside screw. Best thing with these is nice and straight. You get a good bite. Uh, some people like to pre drill their holes. Uh, I think if you go slow with a picket, you'll be okay. I put that first one in, straighten it up, and I'll go my next inside hole. Let's continue putting all six of them in that way. Work away from the inside out. I see it looks nice and straight. Straighten out a little bit right there. Dead center. Next one, inside out. First hinge on. The next step would be to cut the second, the middle rail, and the bottom rail. Um, it's the same thing as you do on the first side. You can see on that side, Junior. And uh, I was gonna go ahead and cut these out. Always wear your glasses, guys. Safety first. I apologize. First one, bad example. I'm just gonna cut right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Fourteen minutes. We're at Fourteen minutes, guys, and we're almost there. So you see, it doesn't take long. You know, of course, I had everything prepped already, but uh, you can do things the right way. I, you know, we got about, about about twenty minutes. You know, give or take. So it doesn't take long. Full skate, full post Inside out, guys. Always start from inside out.
do is my next step is gonna be cut. My next step is gonna be go ahead and cut this gap right here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the fence right there, and that's gonna actually release our fence and our it's gonna be show the reveal. After that, I'll go ahead and notch this little part off that's there, and we'll, we'll go ahead and put latches on. So I'm just coming over here, and I'm just going flush right with my two by four. Step back, let's see if we did anything right. Step back, Junior. And show up nice and easy. I'll come back over here, cut this little notch off a little bit. I'll notch these off as well. Let's go close to my two by four. I'm sorry, guys. Like I said, just, the longer you do this, kind of. Now we'll go ahead and put the hardware on. As you see here, we got a slight gap right there. Um, this all will be covered up, like I said, part of the reveal. I see a little bit I missed there. I'm going to knock that off there at the bottom. Now let's go flush my picket and down. Now put the hardware on. See here, that's the blocking for here for our hardware. The blocking here that we put on there is gonna be for where my, my bolt that actually latch is gonna screw into. That's why this is necessary as well. You can put another brace down here if you want to. It tends to add more weight to the gate. I don't find it necessary, so I don't add it on there. Um, sometimes for aesthetics, for looks, it looks kind of even. Some people like it. I feel about that high off the ground, you know, where you want your latching to be. Uh, screw it in. Can you come closer here, Gina? You can see here that if you don't have this picket here, then you will not be flush and even. You know, say you have a gap here, so you want to make sure that pick is there. Okay, nice snug. Now I'll put the latch on. And we're almost there, guys. We're about, about, I'll say about seven or eight minutes away. Just got to put a latch and a handle on, and we're good to go. So. As you see here, the reason why we put that gap there at the beginning was because if we didn't, you see these bolts there, you'd have the a hang up right there. We got nice clearance, that's the reason why I put the end spacing. We'll go ahead and put a picket up here afterwards to cover this gap up, and you'll see that at the end, okay? So let's put the two screws in here. I'm gonna put my hardware in here, and I like to stick it out about that far. Sometimes you can come closer here, Gina. If you have it too far over that way, uh, you'll have problems closing, so I like to stick it right about there. Inside out. Okay. After you get the first one, you can go ahead and adjust it. I like to put it right in the center of that latching. Not too high, not too low. Right in the center. We'll put our second screw in. Boom. A nice. Actually, I went over a little bit too far. Oh, so. I'm not quite hitting my block on the other side, so I'm just going to take that off. I'm going to move just a bit more inside right there. Okay. Double check my spacing, go a little low right there. 
So nice and centered. I'll put my second screw in. And like I said, the reason why I did that is because I didn't quite hit my two by four. So it makes the body nice and tight. There you go, this one. Boom. Now I'll put the picket on here and I'll put the handle. Okay? So what I do, I grab another picket right here. I'll get this. And I'll get flush the top. And I'm just drawing me a little line right there at the bottom. And then I'll draw another line right there. Oh, well, I'll leave that. Actually, I'll show you. Go to one side the best. Get my square. And let's get off. And let's go ahead and mark this off right here. And like I said, this is going to cover that gap up that you see there. A little light space. And then we'll put our handle on. We'll be done. So. And then now we'll do the bottom. So I'm coming flush to the bottom picket. I'm holding this flush to the bottom. And I'm going to mark. And I'm going to mark to the bottom of this bracket. Mark to the bottom. My square. Almost there, guys. About three more minutes. If y'all find a better video than this on YouTube, how Bill Gates sent it to me. Like I said, I've seen a lot of videos, but in my opinion, the Gates just don't look as good. Up. I want to make sure I got the clearance there. The air pressure on. Just give me a little more air. Pick it on. It also it helps us bring our handle out a little further. Nice and good. Put their handle there. Inside out. The first one in, straighten it out. That's good. Some people like put it at an angle, some people like straight up and down. And like I said, we're gonna have a slide gap right here, but for the most part, when you see it from the street side, you're not gonna be able to see it. Uh, the pickets are gonna shrink anyways. So you have gap going. That's it guys. Nice custom gate. Like I said, at the bottom here, what I'll do here, I, what I like to do is, I like to run a picket along the bottom. I see my raw board I got down here at the bottom. I'll go ahead and cut, I'll go ahead and cut this raw board here, flush and even with there. And I'll add a little longer piece here so we come all with this picket. And down here at the bottom, what I'll do is, I'll add, this little pick it to size and we'll go ahead and put it something like that so we're nice and flush to the ground. Uh, nail that in with little nails. And we're all done. So we're going to the outside here. Check it out. Let me take camera over here. As you see here, we've got a few nails we'll go back and hit up, but for the most part, that's it guys. Go ahead and finish running your pickets out. I'll show you a quick walk through the job we're doing here. It's a pretty big build right here. As you see here, we got all our posts set. Nice straight as an arrow. That should be, you still gotta replace that. So yeah, guys, uh, Derek Helms, Legacy Fence out of Kennedale, 682-557-1818. Leave any comments below. I definitely would love the input. What y'all think? You hear that? That should be. So.
Appreciate it, guys. This will be posted on YouTube. Let's get it.